Hey everybody, it's Mr. Kirk coming from inside this old vacuum tube television set to uh, start off our first lesson of the year in Amplify. So we're going to start with lesson 1.1 in energy. We're going to talk a little bit about energy today and I'm going to get an idea of what you think energy is and then we're going to do a couple simulations, have a short little assignment to reflect on what we went over. So to start off talking about what energy is, we need to understand that energy is part of physical science, okay? And this is gonna lead us into our first area of study in physical science which is not just the knowledge that we're gonna read about, but it's the process used to figure out that knowledge, like the scientific method, right? And we're gonna talk about physical systems and processes and why things like energy and force and um, magnetism and light work the way that they do. So let's start off talking about energy. It's one of the things that physical scientists investigate and of course, you know energy in many, many, many different forms, right? And we're going to dive deep into some of those forms and learn not only how they work, but how we can use them to our advantage. So first, I want you to think about when you hear the word energy, what you think about, right? So just take a couple of seconds and think of words or phrases that you think about when I say the word energy. And maybe you're one of those that when you hear the word energy, you think about food, right? You're low on energy and you want to eat food. And that definitely is a type um, of energy. Or maybe you like fast cars or fast airplanes or fast motorcycles. So when you think about energy, you think about speed, okay? Um, and so all of these things are different forms of energy. Your body needs energy, machines need energy, plants need energy. Energy is, is basically the currency that life needs and science needs, okay? For us to explore energy, we have this great digital sorting tool where you can move objects uh, back and forth from things that have energy to things that don't have energy. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to just turn to an elbow partner and work through all of these items on the left and decide, do you think they have energy or do you think they don't have energy? And if both of you agree that the object has energy, then you're gonna move that object into the things that have energy bin. If you both agree that the object does not have energy, then you'll move it into the other bin, the things that do not have energy. And if you're not sure, you don't agree with each other, then you just leave it in the toolbar, okay? Um, and just be prepared to justify your position if you guys don't agree. So uh, you, can, you can pause the video here and you can bring up um, the sorting tool and work through that with a partner. If you don't have a partner to work with, that's okay. You can just do it yourself. But go ahead and pause the video. All right, we're back here. Now, in this unit, you're going to take on the role of uh, a student energy scientist. And we've got a very specific problem that we're trying to solve. So I want you to uh, take a moment, watch this video and identify the problem that we're trying to solve. Hey, come on over here. Come on, let's check the next floor. Abby. How stable is this building? After the earthquake, not sure, but we don't have much time to evacuate any survivors. A Abby, I think I see someone. Are you okay? Can you hear me? She's breathing and she has a steady pulse, but she needs to get to the hospital. 
Calling our position. Uh, my battery's dead. Wonderful. Use mine. Your battery's drained too. You can get up now, Anna. Good thing it's just a test trail, right? Well, it could be worse. I guess we still have working flashlights. Guys, we have to find a way to keep these batteries charged. Hey, you must be the rescue workers. Welcome to the energy research lab. Thanks. So, I hear your batteries died during a drill. Yeah. If it would have been a real emergency, we would have been in trouble. Serious trouble. We rely on the radios to communicate with emergency workers, like police, fire departments, hospitals. And we don't know how long we're going to be in an emergency situation. We could be out there for a while. It's not feasible to plug your devices in to charge while you're on a rescue mission? No, we can't count on it. We could be out in the wilderness, or the power grid may not be working. Hmm. Even if it is on, we may not be in one place long enough to charge it. OK. So what you really need is a portable energy source that can power a small device. But not just radios. We have GPS and flashlights. Got it. We'll put the team to work and be in touch when we have a few designs. Sounds good. Thanks. <laughs> All right, so let's discuss that video and, and specifically what the rescue team's problem is, okay? So again, this is, before we start, like this is a fictional rescue team, obviously, right? But they have a real problem. They need energy for small devices that oftentimes will go neglected. They will um, not be thought about until an emergency situation, right? So if you just think about that, it's like the batteries in our smoke detectors. You know, we don't really check on those uh, unless it's an emergency. And that's why um, oftentimes they'll say when we have uh, daylight savings that that's a good time to change the batteries in all your smoke detectors so that twice a year we change those batteries. Because we need that energy only in emergency situations. And a lot of times, out of sight, out of mind, and we can actually drain them of all of their uh, all of, of their energy so they don't work when we need them to. So we want to try to figure out how can we help the rescue team have energy in their devices uh, when, uh, when an emergency strikes, okay? So our unit question, and we, we actually post this up for us to look at the unit question in this first unit, how is it possible to charge electrical devices when the power is out? Okay, now that's, a, that's a pretty big challenge if you think about it, all right? And, and that's something that we're going to, to kind of work through and try to solve um, as we uh, learn more about energy, okay? So let's take a moment and think. I just want you to think to yourself, all right? How is it possible to charge electrical devices when the power is out? And there's a lot of products out there that allow you to charge your, your cell phone um, if the power is out, all right? So think about how we have you know, generators and we have solar panels, right? There's many different ways that we can charge our electrical devices when the power is out, including uh, batteries, right? We, we have um, really strong batteries now that we can charge with a USB device, and those things will charge our electric uh, devices in times of emergency, okay? For our first chapter of this unit, we are going to talk about what energy is, and specifically, does it matter to the rescue team? Okay, so um, think about this chapter one question as we roll through chapter one. Okay, 
Before we can really address that unit question, we need more information about energy. And we need to be able to understand what it is and why it's important to the rescue team. So focusing on this chapter question is going to help us to understand how we can offer a solution, devise a solution for the rescue team. So today, we're just going to focus on the first part of this question, what is energy? And we've got one of the nice things about Amplify is we've got these great simulators. And we can design simulated um, situations or experiences, or in this case, like machines, to see if we can get a job done. So today, we're trying to make a light shine. And you've got this, uh, this simulator that's called the Harnessing Human Energy Sim, all right? And it's going to allow us to understand energy better as we're going to help out the rescue team. So uh, working either in pairs or on your own, you're going to, to build some simple machines and then share whatever interesting observations you have. So if we're in class, then we're going to try to partner up. If you are watching this video because you're out of class, then you're going to obviously do this on your own. Okay. So you will click for this is activity two. You're going to click the harnessing human energy simulator. And to help you understand how that simulator works, I've got a little video for you to watch and they'll show you all the different features. So just uh, sit back for a second, pay attention, watch this video and learn how to use the simulator. All right, now it's your turn to go use the simulator. All right, and when you come back, we're gonna ask these questions. What were you able to do and what did you notice? So. As you um, go about this task, I want you to, um, and again, we're just trying to kind of build a little machine here and kind of play around. I want you to see what are you able to do in the sim. So, so right now, it's just kind of playing around with the sim and then um, kind of be able to answer that question, what did you notice? And then you're gonna have a specific mission. So when you're done kind of playing around with that, either, again, if you're on your own, you're doing this on your own, but if you're in class with me, you're gonna do this with a partner and you're gonna work on this mission together. So um, you can do the drop down. The mission is to build a system that's gonna make a light shine. So just remember, a flashlight is just an example of a small device, obviously important in rescue situations, but it's going to depend that it have energy. Now, fortunately, uh, flashlights have become very efficient, so we don't need a lot of energy. So you need to build a system that makes a light shine. Okay, It's a simple system, but you need to be able to build one using the items uh, down below and then discuss with each other examples of energy that you notice in your system, okay? Um, so we don't have to worry about the right words, the scientific definitions of things. It's just, I want you to spend some time taking a look at what you see and being able to discuss that, all right? And uh, go ahead and uh, take five minutes and turn the video off and do that. So now that we're back, the question is, how did you get the light to shine? And I, I want you to uh, think about what examples of energy you noticed in those systems, right? Motors and generators and engines. Um, and there are a lot of examples, okay? And there are many different ways that you could have gotten a light to shine. And it introduces this, this word of, of system, which is a set of interacting parts that forms a, a, a complex thing, right? So our system is built up um, of many different components, and that system refers to the entire thing. 
So if you used uh, an engine to drive something that then powered the light, that all three of those put together would be the system, okay? So throughout this year, uh, we're going to introduce you to new words in the glossary, I mean, new words uh, in science that you can use a glossary that Amplify ha has to help you understand better what they mean. So anytime you come across a word, a new science word, and you're not sure what it is, you'll be able to go to the glossary and see it. So we've got a bunch of different words in our Harnessing Human Energy section that um, if you get stumped or you forget, you can always go back and review, all right? So looking at the systems that, uh, that you built, that you played around with, and if you're in class, the systems that we talked about in class, the question is, do you think any of the systems that you built or saw in the system in the system might be feasible for the rescue team's flashlights? Okay, so that's the thought process. So for the rest of class, and if you don't get this done in class, it, it will be homework, okay? You're gonna just reflect on the ideas about energy that you saw either in your own systems, the video, the systems, the conversations we had, or you saw in other students' uh, systems and how they described things, just depending on uh, where you were when you saw this and what motivated you. And then there are these uh, real simple little reflection um, questions that you will fill out. And, and key is this, I want you to do two things. One, I always want you to fully answer the question. So do you think a moving skateboard has energy? Why or why not? So if you just put the answer no or yes or maybe, like that is not an, a sufficient answer. I need a complete answer. In this case, why or why not? And uh, secondly to that, I want you to always use complete sentences in, um, in your answers. So in, in eighth grade, we are now at a point where we can expect that students will answer in, in using complete sentences, okay? So you will use complete sentences to fully answer the question. If it takes you two sentences to do that, fantastic. If it takes you eight sentences to do that, fantastic. But that's the expectation, is that you'll be able to use complete sentences and fully answer the questions, okay? Then when you're done with uh, these questions, which is labeled homework, but you could easily get this done in class, you just hit the submit button and turn it in, all right? Hope you all have a great day, and I'll see you for our next lesson.